Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of the IP3 podcast. I'm Kevin Brayer, joined as usual by Alex Becker and Rhea Adams. Uh, and today we're going to talk about mostly ProQuest season. Uh, it's it's what's happening right now. We're through the first week of events. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, our own ProQuest experiences, uh, as well as sort of the, you know, the, the wider view of metagame results. Um, but before we dive into that, we've got a few bits of news uh, coming down the pipe. Um, first of all, we now know that the first Pro Tour of 2025 is going to be in London. We knew Europe, we didn't know where. Officially confirmed to be London. Uh, April 10th through the 13th. So that's like the first day through the Sunday. Um, our very own Alex Becker, spoiler alert for the main topic, was the one of the three of us this weekend to uh, come out with an invite. So that's pretty sweet. We had a good, we had a good showing though. Between we, the three of us went to two events. We had six top eights. Three top fours, two finals, and a uh, an invite to show for it. That is a pretty good, pretty good hit rate. You're right. Hard to hard to complain. I could, but I won't. I'll I'll try. <laughs> you should. It's bad yeah, beats. Pretty solid, pretty solid conversion, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then just announced today, there's going to be a fifth anniversary live stream. Uh, not really sure what that entails exactly, um, but that I live. Mean, oh. Surely we're finding out what's in the packs that are already sold out at the World Championship. That like that's got to be what it is. Yeah, got to be what it is. Um, Think so. And maybe I they like. like I, I feel like it's much more exciting if nobody knows until they open it. I but we we're trying to get like a hint, right? I don't know. I also suspect that there will be some sort of announcement about like, because we heard about the fifth anniversary IRA promos that game stores will be able to host. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of additional exclusive pricing that we just hadn't, we don't know about until this live stream for those fifth anniversary events. Or we find out how stores qualify for those or. Or we find out, yeah, how you get to hold one. Yeah. That'd be nice to know. I still, I still need to line up one of the anime alt art viscerais. If not, I've not bit the bullet I, on that. If you're I've watching got this, lined up. Oh, you do, wait, <laughs> what? Oh, do they have a spare viscerai? <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, shoot, shoot. I'll have to. Still got to work on that. If you're listening to this and you've got a spare anime viscerai coming down the pipe, hit me up. Uh, but yeah, so that live stream is uh, yeah, Sunday, October 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Flesh and Blood officially turns 5 on October 11th, which is the same day that I turned 34. So I think Flesh and Blood's pretty lucky that I am willing to share my birthday with it. So How nice of you. Kevin. You're so yeah. generous. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Uh, but Fab, if you want to give me a really sweet birthday present whenever we get around to Monarch 3.0, please, please, please let me spoil a Shadow Rune Blade card. It doesn't even have to be good. I just, it would be awesome. I'd, I'd, I'd make it worth your while. It would be overly produced in some way, shape, or form. We just, uh, we have a real passion for overdone spoiler videos, both of us. <laughs> Kevin has been my uh, writing script editor on both of my spoiler vids, and I am very appreciative. So <laughs> I know that he would also do great work on his own. Or for the IP3 cast, you know. It's true. You could give us both, and then we, we could have a light versus shadow <laughs> thing. I, I, I'm, um, I'm the shadow one of the three, but the other two, they're, they're, they're light folks. <laughs> yeah, but, but Alex is a weird iris prism light player no 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 alex <laughs> is a bolton player <laughs> oh you're right you're right uh but we digress 
Uh, so yeah, like like Alex mentioned earlier, we did all three of us went to the same pair of events that we very conveniently had uh, locally in the Cleveland area this weekend. Um, Saturday was Classic Constructed. Sunday was Draft. Um, I played Viscerai. Played, played, played the OG up here. Um, <laughs> and it was sweet. Uh, I hadn't played paper reps with Viscerai in well over a year. Um, and but once you got it, you just you just got it. <laughs> it. Look, I mean, all I did, you know, most of what I did for the first year and a half ish playing this game mm-hmm. was just all Viscerai. Even when Chain initially hit the scene, I didn't I didn't jump ship immediately. Yep. Uh, you know, I was like, oh yes, let me do let me do gross things with Viscerai with these new room blade cards too. But yeah, it's like. Uh... I, why I took Azalea to Nationals is because uh, I have so much muscle memory on this deck. I mm-hmm. don't have any time to practice this year, so I'm just going to take it and <laughs> we're, we'll do it live. Yep. Turns out Rune Chant math is there, there is a lot of solid muscle memory there. So made it through seven rounds with I, I don't think I ever missed a Rune Chant trigger the whole day. I, I never saw you miss a Rune Chant trigger. And I only almost miss a Tunic trigger one time. Which mm-hmm. is is pretty good. Um, nor- normally, Vincent is sort of like default. It's really hard to miss a tunic trigger in Vincent because you do two things at the start of turn, so you just go left to right and put counters and tokens on things. Right. Look, it works. I don't miss tunic counters. Yeah, in Vincent, no, that's but, true. Uh, but I went three and one in Swiss. My loss was to Alex uh, in round three. And then, Ray, we played round four, right? When we were already locked? Yeah. Yes, we played round four. We were both already locked. Okay, yeah. Um, and uh, I was able to get the better of Ray in that you, one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I was playing Enigma. Um, and I had a mirror dry turn, two resources floating, tuna counter up, going to follow with a phantasmoclasm. And Kevin has a face purgatory block that I think we did the math. It ended up being worth 14 value because it maybe discard a phantasmoplasm. He got the full value of blocking on the mirror drive for eight with the equipment and the attack action and the non-attack action. And he drew a card to use on the next turn cycle. It was, it was insane. I mean, it's, <laughs> that it's even more than that then too. Silly. So, so, so just... Or I guess no. So base two from the block, so, plus nine, plus no. You're right. 14, plus, 14. plus three from the card that you drew ish. Yeah. Yep. Face Pretty Pretty insane. Real good. <laughs> real real good. Um. Yeah, that's like two storm striders in your head slot. <laughs> uh, my game against Alex was crazy close. Alex, yeah, why don't you Alex was on... with the end of this one. Well, what hero did you play, Alex? Verdance. There we go. I was playing Verdance. Uh, I went into the event saying, just don't pair me into Mark playing a Cilio round one, and I'll be happy. And, of course, the universe is like, ha, joke's on you. Uh, so Mark and I played round one, and that's not a good match for me. So Mark, Mark won that one. <laughs> we've, we've like tested it a bunch of times. and um, I would I randomly drew two rampant growths, so I like had a chance to kill him on his turn, but I was like three points short. And while he was at like twenty three, which is very funny, he was like <laughs> making fun of me for thinking so long. I was like, no, no, I might be able, to, I might be, might be killing you here. And he was like, what? <laughs> is that uh, yeah. Legal? But yeah. it was not to be. Um, round two easiest match of my life. My opponent stood no chance. It was the empty chair of the bye. <laughs> uh, and then Kevin and I played. And Warmongers is still really good against yeah. Mr. I. <laughs> I think I was down. It was I went, not looking I went... good. It was not looking good for a while. I think you were at 23 and I was at 1. Going down to one to like play the warmongers. 
not... something like yeah, like or maybe like sixteen. But yeah, I was I was comfortably in the teens uh, yeah. when you when you were basically at one. And like no H pots, no nothing on the board. Yeah. Right. So I'm able to play Warmongers. Kevin chooses peace. Thank goodness. Because I think your hand was like you made a bunch of rune chants, right? I, I think I had like Mordred Reed or Mordred become or no, it, it was Mordred become discard and attack get a read. Or maybe I had already done it, but something like that. Some some Mordred solid or setup the line. Dirge, right? Yeah. But anyways, Kevin makes a bunch of rune chants. I chose war without knowing what my hand was going to be and draw up and see a enlightened strike, a random card, a blue, and a felling of the crown. It's like, wow, this is the dream hand to draw <laughs> in this exact scenario. <laughs> so E strike go again. I think you blocked with a card. And then Felling of the crown, making you lose another card. And then I, I can't remember if you blocked on it. Yet, but is a hell of a card. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. It's incredible. And then I think you went to five off of that after both of those attacks. And then uh, you went to attack me with all of your rune chants. And I was able to use Storm Shatters on Scour to destroy said rune chants and deal that much arcane damage. And and viewers, at this point, I need to step in. Uh, we need to question Alex's wizard card because he had the opportunity to double rampant growth on that kill turn and was like, no, I don't need it for lethal. And I'm like, you do it to flex. <laughs> you don't do it because you need it. I definitely stole that game, so I wasn't going to make Kevin feel <laughs> even worse than he was already feeling. Uh, nah, it's all good. It was That was a fun one. It was, I mean, I hadn't played it before. It was a completely new matchup, so I was just like, all right, I'm going to go full bore aggro, and we'll just see how this shakes out. That is the Almost correct good. way to do it, by the way. Almost good. Um, if you give Verdant's breathing room, she will combo the crap out of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also got, incre- I got Arsenal to become the Arc Knight. At the, en- the turn that I did the Mordred setup stuff, I Arsenal'd. Or actually, it was probably the first time that I did a become for read, and I didn't have it for the second one. But I arsenaled a become the Arc Knight, being like, "This just fixes whatever my next hand is." After I did this nice setup turn, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "I just need it to not be the second. You know, there was two copies of Plow Under left to come out at that point. I'm like, I just need that to not be exactly this moment." Promptly, Plow Under, goodbye, become the Arc Knight. And I was like, "Ah, oh, you, you could have the first one of chance. the game too, right? Yeah, yeah." Yeah, yeah. I would have to block with the other one, and then, yeah. But that was a really close game between pals. And then my last round was against, uh, although beating Kevin locked me for top eight. But then the last round was against uh, Levia, which I hadn't played that match before. But I kind of just played my game plan. Levia doesn't really have a ton of on hits, so I kind of just block with Earth cards and. Attack for good value and set up a combo. So yeah, you just get to play to your that. nice efficiency game. Yeah, and all of the all the normal good disruption turns out also just good into Leviah. Um, and then top eight. Yeah, so top eight. Uh, we actually. Uh, so Mark Morrison was the other calling uh, champion. Te- calling champion. Calling yeah, card for champion, champion Mark, Mark Morrison. Morrison. <laughs> uh, was the other Team Eclipse member to make the top eight. And we actually, we that was when we had the dream bracket, right? We were all, I think yeah, we... That was the blessed bracket. So yeah. four friends in the top eight and no one had to play each other in the first round. So we could have swept the top four theoretically, but... Um, it was not meant to be. Think out for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I... Uh, my top eight match was a rematch into a uh, a KO that I had played earlier in the tournament. Um, and the first time I played him, like, no doubt about it, I just high rolled like crazy. Like, three mm-hmm. Mordred Tides in, turns in a row with Malefics in play, and it was just it was just kind of brutal. The second game was much, much closer. Um, 
but I was able to was able to eke out eke out the win in the end, which was uh, which felt good. Thank so you. Kevin's on to. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and then Mark playing a Cilio bested a Leviah in the yeah. top eight. Yeah. He just got to do his combo. And Some, it was sometimes the nuts. guards just line up and you're like, oh sweet. Okay. Yeah. I, I think he went off on turn two or three. Terrifying. Um, I did not fare so well. Uh, I snuck in an eighth seed on Enigma and had to play the undefeated first seed Aurora. And unfortunately, the night before, out of fear of Adam Franze, our local Prism Terror, I cut most of my Aurora tech in favor of Prism tech. And then I didn't play Adam, and I did play two Auroras on the day. <laughs> um, he found his Flicker Wisp Arc Lightning combo on like turn three, I think. And I went from 34 life to 13 life, despite full blocking with my hand. And uh, the game was just kind of over at that point. I, I think it was like 31 to 0. It was not pretty. Yeah, uh, so that knocks me out of the real rough. Bracket. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Yeah. And then my top 8 match was against the other Enigma in the top 8, who's running Counter Blessings, which I think is actually... Not that bad of a matchup. I've got so I got some uh, spicy Enigma tech in my Verdant <laughs> deck. A um, lot of spicy Enigma tech. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fair, fair. Uh, but definitely took them uh, off guard. But they just they started super hot, dropping two auras, turn zero, and then my hand was not enough to clear those, and then they dropped a. Mirror Guy Shimmers on their next turn. Oh, hold then... on, Alex. You you can't say I've got the spicy Enigma tech and then not tell us what the spicy Enigma tech is. Oh, I I get to that. I'll get okay, to that. okay. It'll okay. be eleven hundred dollars. That's that's that's. <laughs> that Subscribe to my page. No, no, no. <laughs> Just three cases of Rosetta, please. Yeah. <laughs> um. But their yeah, their first three turns were just like blocking all my damage and playing out a bunch of auras. So in order to actually clear the board, I had to go down to fifteen, and then the game gets to start where like clear clear boards, and uh, I just could not catch up after that. I had to use my plume of evergrowth to get a blocking card at one point in the game to oh, live. Not where you want to be. Yeah, it was uh, a not was a rough. good sign. My deck did not line up, and their deck definitely lined up. So I think I, uh, the life pad is hilarious to look at because it's me going down to three, and then back up to seven, and then back down to three, and then like up to four, and then back back down to two, and like <laughs> it's just like this zigzag. Uh, it's very funny, <laughs> but the spicy enigma tech is uh, aether eyes. Because I can't tell you the amount of turns that I have uh, bricked Enigma's turns by uh, negating their Transcend cards. If only I convinced you to play it off of Tunic instead of having to pitch a card for it. One day, I'm going to get you to play Tunic in, in, in Verdance one day. It's one day, so maybe. Good, I promise you. Maybe. Maybe if, you, maybe if you started playing Verdant, then it's, I got to see it. I've, I would believe I've it. got the deck right here. <laughs> I'm just waiting on my Plume of Evergrowth in the mail. Uh, but yeah, the best feeling is when they play a uh, uh, le uh, Levels of Enlightenment, and then they say hold priority, and I'm holding an Aether <laughs> in my hand, but I'm like, yes. Please do that. <laughs> walk, please walk right into yeah. the trap. Be ashamed if something happened. And then their transcend gets nullified, and then they have to arsenal mirror guy instead of playing it, and then they don't get to draw a card to go again off of uh, strike. It's just plus two instead. So, okay, yeah. question though. Is it better 
to let the transcend finish so that they try and resolve the mirror guy and you just aetherize the mirror guy? You mirror can't. Guy costs three. Aetherize, aetherize, aetherize only has zero and one cost. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking it just yeah. said instant. We, Kevin, we can't have good counter spells in this game. <laughs> we can fair, only have fair. bad counter spells. What is anything? <laughs> what a time to be alive. That is, that's great, though. Yeah. I, I mean, I was sitting right next to you when that game happened, and the first, the first time an Aetherize came out, I feel like, I feel like your Enigma opponent was, was pretty shook. Just like, wait, what? What is the text on this card? Yeah, they definitely had to read it, and then every time they transcended for the rest of the game, it was, am I allowed to do this? Like, I'm playing this. Is this, is this good? Uh, so definitely, definitely made them think for the rest of the game too. Blue cards from Magic seeping into flesh and blood. Am I? Is this okay? Is this, does this result? Seep, seeping into <laughs> all the way back in Crucible of War. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I was the only one that advanced to the top four, uh, and then the friend bracket fell apart. So top four was me against Mark, and then it was uh, Enigma versus Aurora on the other half of the bracket. So. Viscerai against Asilio, and uh, I came out of the gate swinging. Asilio doesn't block super well. Uh, actually, I, I will say the start of the game was somewhat unique. Uh, so I had a single copy of Arknet Ascendancy in my sideboard. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, tutor target. You run Become the Arc Knight, or you run Rattle Bones, and sometimes you just got this big stack of chance. You're like, you know, the best thing I can do I, here is a, attack with Dominate. Sounds good. I, I will say, Deadwood Dirge, it's incredible how often Viscerize is like, yeah, I just have six rune chance right now. It, just, it happens so much more often than it used to. It really makes cards like that much more playable. It's really cool. Yeah, and my my opening hand just like looked pretty solid so i i didn't bring grasp i was on vexing coil hand and dyadic carapace and i'm looking at a hand that was like it had a had a blue uh red condemned to slaughter mordred tide and arknight ascendancy and i was like hmm. and I, so first turn i was just like i'll just just arsenal and we'll see what happens and i drew another red um condemned to slaughter and i'm like well you know, I didn't I didn't put ascendancy in the deck to not do this kind of play, so I popped my vexing quill <laughs> hand. Mor Mordred Tide, break vexing quill hand, condemn to slaughter, condemn to slaughter. Uh you ate one of my seven rune chants to destroy Mark's Channel Lightning Valley. Hey, that's and, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then dropped Arc Knight Ascendancy for six rune chants and eleven physical with dominate on a Mordred Tide turn. Uh, so got the one card block and all of the armor he could put in front of it, and I still hit for five, made six new rune chants for the next turn, and yeah. Um, I will say, uh, par partially the hype of the other people watching, because Asilio, when that deck goes off, it just does really silly things, there was a really solid um, gone in a flash turn of like two blinks, and then at some point there was a uh snatch for seven and i might be conflating these turns mm -hmm. but basically mark scared me into blocking stupid one turn we're like I in mean, my it, you know mark's always got it on the top of the deck so i got you got to play it safe but uh the, the scary part of that turn though was that he didn't even need to pop lightning greaves he started doing the math in his head and he was like oh, i don't even need greaves i get to keep my arcane barrier and he still did like 30 to you in a turn yeah. Or, threat, uh, or presented 30. And and so I blocked. I used armor block on that turn. And then towards the end of the chain, it was a snatch for seven. And I just, I was like, <laughs> I let all the preceding stuff in the turn, like, intimidate me into a stupid decision in the moment. And I put my spellbound creepers in front of the snatch mm -hmm. to hit block the breakpoint of seven and was holding uh, a, a two block in hand. I think it was just a revel or something. Um, but if I had just like had more wherewithal, I just put that last card in front of it and keep my creepers because me not having creepers meant Mark lived an entire extra turn cycle, which is super risky. But, uh, that was my one, like just full on bad decision mistake of that event. And, but fortunately it did not cost me and I was able to close it out. 
and then the other half of the top four, uh, the Enigma came out like out of the starting blocks super yeah, fast yeah. and actually just ran over the Aurora. Which yeah, I, was, I was watching that game. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> they took ten damage turn one and never took any damage the rest of the game because their board was just so overwhelming. Some, I mean, it's exactly like what Pablo Pintor said after his calling win, right? Some Enigma turns just feel like cheating. <laughs> they don't happen every game, but when Enigma pops off, it's just like, how does any deck ever deal with this? Yeah. Uh, so I was in the finals. I was playing Enigma. And this game, when it started, nobody thought that this would be a 90-minute matchup. <laughs> um, but I I believe I pitched Arknight Shard five times in this game. Yeah. Well, not only did we not think it was going to take 90 minutes, we didn't realize both of you would be at one life for 40 of those minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was kind of nuts. It was... I wouldn't say... My deck didn't just fall apart. It still it still did stuff. It still had some good turns, uh, but I kept like being like just a, a hair shy of I don't know d doing the busted thing or or doing something to get some great value. There was at least three different turn cycles in that game where I'm like, okay, you know, it's kind of an in between turn. This might be a great opportunity to like face purgatory just just for value kind of thing, um, and. But three different times when I'm like, okay, it's one of those in between turns. I like drop four attacks or four non attacks. And I'm just like, well, this isn't going to work. Uh, and just the turns never lined up. So, so the game ended and I blocked for two with Face Purgatory and I blocked for one with Spellbound Creepers. And that was all that those cards did, which is a problem. Not where you want to be. Big, big problem. Uh, I also had zero turns with. A more active Mordred tide or a more zero Mordred tide turns where I had a Malefic incantation in play, and just things just fought right. Like I had a turn where I'm like, cool, good explosive offense, end with zero rune chance, draw up a hand that's four cost reduction based attacks, or uh, or like maybe you know maybe there's one dot attack in there, but just like you know not not totally falling flat, but just never never kept things rolling, um, and so. I was behind on the board early, which just meant that Enigma got to chip in way too much free damage, uh, you know, in the first five to six to seven turns of the game. Um, they also, at some point, got to... I had an early Rattlebones turn that they were able to... Was it Passover? Pass yeah. yeah, and they, they, they had the Passover season. to eat the attack that I was trying to target, so my turn just ended um you know so that, that was a like six ish value lost at least kind of standpoint um and there was a turn they also drew, I mean, they also yeah. drew the nuts a couple times where at one point you had 10 rune chance i think and their only out is drawing all blues and they did it <laughs> and then another time it's like the only way this they, it doesn't take their whole hand if they draw like a sink below here, and they did it. <laughs> it's just like yeah, I needed crazy. one yeah. one more little micro thing to go my direction. I just couldn't get it to happen. Um, but we we ground it down. You know, it, it got to one to one, and then I think like you said, we forty minutes. I think we played up around a dozen turn cycles at one to one in this game. Yeah, it was um, ridiculous. And... Both players near fatigue at the end of the game as well. <sighs> It was, it was super fun. You, it was brutal. Yeah. Blue Amplify the Arc Knight is the bane of my <laughs> existence. Yeah, I think you should not play that card anymore. You mm. drew two copies in the same hand, like twice, twice while yeah. trying to close this game out. <laughs> too many times. And the one, and the one that ended up killing me is, oh well, if I take this play line where I go like, send send two rune chants, and a blue amplify for just four. It's like, I just need the, you know, the very last defense reaction in the deck to not be in hand right now. And it was, Literally it was an arsenal. Right yeah. And so 
I took two cards and left them with three and died to the uh, astral etchings over the top of the one spectral shield that just kept coming in. Um, but yeah, those those damn blue amplified dark knights they're the worst did we did we learn our lesson about condemned to slaughter against enigma though i mean did we learn our lesson there were several times in that game where you had rune chance and enigma had spectral shields with counters and you chose not to condemn you like you you played condemn and you chose to not do the let's trade auras thing but it just meant that like Enigma spent the whole hand pitching to Arcane Barrier, and so the shields got to live. If you have the option as Viscerai, you should just always trade Rune Chant for Spectral Shield because you're like essentially turning them into unpreventable chance. Like you're guaranteeing you're not allowed to AB these, they will kill your board. Yeah, there was there was two times where I had that decision point. And one time, the one time I, or the second time that I didn't choose to like sack a chant to do that, was because I knew I was going to send four total rune chants on the turn. Um, which if they want to like keep that last shield alive and give a second card to AB, I'm just okay with it. And if they don't, then it's like I sacked a rune chant anyways. Um. Yeah, but Anima doesn't really have good one card hands, and she has great zero card hands because it's just swing shield for free. That's fair. Like, she has no good one card hands except play a new aura. I guess if you're running Snatch as Enigma, which he definitely was not doing. Yeah, and then there was another time where I think I think the reason I talked myself out of it was because like, I, I thought I had a rune chant threshold that mattered, but Tunic was up, so it ended up or like could have covered it up anyways. I don't know. I I forget, you know, that game was so long. I don't remember the exact state yeah. of things, but it's no worries. Uh, but that's that's my cautionary tale for the viewers to take away. If you have the chance to trade a rune chant for a special shield, Viscerai versus Enigma, I think you're basically always supposed to. Unless it would mess up like your cost reduction on Amplify the Arcanite or whatever. Yeah, and I will say it wasn't if any if if it was a situation where every chant in play had a counter on it, in a heartbeat I trade that. Mm -hmm. the, when I didn't do it, it's because there were uncountered shields, shields that I'm just like, well, they'll just get rid of that one. And, uh, but yeah, so game was one to one for a really, really, really long time, and then Blue Amplify the Arc Knight let my opponent keep a three card hand one time and it ended me because they had an attack react and I surely wasn't playing any defense reactions. Uh, but the game was sweet. The deck is awesome. It was a, it was an incredible game to watch. It yeah. was so good. Um, definitely painful to, you know, 90 minute finals match where everything is on the line, which, you know, is awesome. But then the game was over and I was like, oh, I, I don't have, you know, give or take $1,200 worth of prize value because I lost. I'm like, well, this, this stings. But you got, but I have, you got half a box of Rosetta. I did. I still haven't opened it. I actually need to. Uh, Ooh. I, I did I did get did get some packs that I still have to open. Um, and hey, we're, I got the Blanche playmat, which if anybody's interested. We're recording something right now that could be kind of interesting if you opened a Marvel Rosetta Thorn on camera. <laughs> You've swung me. <laughs> I'm a genius. So while Kevin does that, should we talk about our uh, draft request we went to the next day? Yeah, let's do that. That one was also local. This was at Immortals, uh, which is just the name of a game store in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, bright and early, 10 a.m. Sunday morning start time. Uh, but you know what? I would much rather the, a pro quest start early than start late. Yeah, I always, hate those events always, where you're like always. still playing the finals at 10 p.m. at the LGS. Uh, so it was draft. And I think Kevin was in a pod by himself. Alex and I were one person right pod. Next. One person pod. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark well, was in, in my pod. In Mark was in my pod. Of, in terms of IP3, I mean, in yes, terms of yes, us yes. three. I was on an island, it's true. 
And then Alex and I were actually sat right next to each other. Um, my draft started out, my draft was very strange, uh, in the first draft. Um, I was not really impressed with anything in the pack. I took a pack one, pick one red for the ground. The card's just a very safe pick. Um, and then Alex, who I know loves to draft Earth, big Burdens player, passed me a pack one, pick two red for the ground. And I was like, something is up here. <laughs> I think Earth might be open. Am I... Do you remember what your pack one, pick one was? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sigil of Lightning. Okay, okay. Because I, you say that I draft Earth, and it just happens to be that all of our drafts, like, this just been my seat, so I have, I've been surrounded by Lightning, but I actually prefer, if I, if given the choice, I want to play Asilio. Really? Like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that about you. Those, those are the most, like, uninteractable games, <laughs> where it's like... You're... Yeah. Uh, like I'm just gonna do a bunch of arcane that you can't prevent, and if you don't have the life gain right now, I'm gonna win the game. So I, I go in looking to play Asilio, and if it doesn't work out, that I'm I'm not not married to it. Like I played Verdance, I played Florian, mm. uh, but when I open a pack and it's got Sigil of Lightning, I I take it, and then <laughs> when the next pack comes to me, and it also has a system of lightning. I take that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right, cool. I am 90% sure I'm a Cilio. And it just so happened that uh, I was the only lightning drafter in the first pack. Mm. Oh, yeah, so I, so Wait, I noticed... The, in the whole first pack, you're the only person taking lightning cards? I, I, yeah. I think so, yes. Jeez. Because and... I noticed a very interesting trend. Keep on going. Because I was yeah. immediately to your left. So I was getting the dregs of your packs. Yeah. And uh, directly opposite me is uh, Jesse. So we're going to play each other round one. And we, we talked about it a little bit after. And he, uh, with like, I think five cards left in the first pack, he realized that he needed to be Lightning. So he swapped mm -hmm. and started playing Lightning and ended up on a Cilio as well. So we played the Mirror round one. Which ended up being that, like, turns out three packs of Asilio cards is better than one or two and some change packs of Asilio cards. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was really weird from my seat because I'm immediately towards Alex's left. So I'm getting to, like, see all of the packs after he's taken what he wanted out of it. And so it's like the first couple of picks, I'm getting past some really premium Earth cards. And then. Because, as Alex said, he was the only lightning drafter, which means that everyone to his right is taking Earth. Earth disappears, and Alex is drafting all the lightning cards right now. So I'm like, you know, third or fourth pick, wow, there's two red zaps in this pack? All right, I'm going to take this red trailblazing aether. And then fourth pick, I'm like, wow, there's a, there's a red aether quickening? I'm going to take that. And it's just like, I very comfortably ended up in the mono arcane verdant stack, which is which is just like multiple chorus at the amphitheater, as many trailblazing aether and aether quickening as you can get, and then just like arcane twinings and photon slicings and exploding aethers, and it's like I am not going to attack my opponent. I am just going to burn them out, and I can outrace the aggro the lightning decks and versus the earth decks. They don't get to decompose, so they don't get their efficient life gain. And uh, to cap it all off, so I, so I went through all of pack one like that. And then pack two, I opened 10 foot tall and bulletproof. So I'm like, we've got the plan. So I <laughs> trailblazing Aether with go again into 10 foot tall people to death. And, uh, 10 foot tall people <laughs> to death. <laughs> uh, it was a foolproof plan, except that uh, Alex's deck was much better than mine, regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my Asilio deck was very silly, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, so I won a Verdance Mirror in the first round of my draft. Um, he was playing a more traditional, like, Earth Decompose Verdance, and he just didn't get to decompose because I wasn't attacking him and letting him block. And then I had to play Alex round two. And... Uh, yeah. Well, uh, round we'll, one, I played we'll Alex. Tell the story. <laughs> I, I played. I played Jesse round one. It's also on Asilia, so We're playing the mirror, where it's just like we're just throwing big numbers at each other. 
I chose to go. I won the roll. Chose to go second, and then uh, I used the sanctuary and my boots to prevent the arcane damage turn zero because it's like this game is not going to go very long, so I might as well use these things while they're not hampering my offense as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I was able to just have a really silly turn towards the end of the game. A really where... silly turn. Yeah. A silly, oh. yeah, I went, I played five lightning cards, uh, and then, like, bounced a instant back to my hand, a sigil back to my hand, discarded it to a to draw another card, and basically, if it was a zap, then Jesse dies, <laughs> and if it's not a zap, then he can hold his hand and probably kill me, but luck was on my side, and it was a yellow zap for seven arcane damage, because <laughs> full star. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. And then round two was uh, Rhea and... I, I remember our game not being particularly close. Hold on, let me chat. <laughs> let me yeah. chat. Uh, I have opened all those packs and I got five Majestics and a Cold Foil Calming Cloak. But no, no yeah. Marvel Rosetta. I tried, chat. I really tried. <laughs> Send me more sealed product. Um, I'll open it on podcasts. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, you were still at uh, seven life when I died, which is yeah, really when I only bad. Started eighteen. Yeah, when you only started eighteen, that's that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, my deck <sighs> is doing gross things. Um, and then round three for the the three O match playing against Florian. This Florian draft deck was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. They win the roll. They go first. They drop a red harvest season, a yellow harvest season, Arsenal pass. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then uh, I do something. Doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> and then uh, they heal all the damage back off of harvest season. And then play an arcane seeds life, <laughs> and then proceed to like have a bunch of damage turns, and then two turns later they play a felling of the crown. <laughs> hey, I've heard that card's pretty good. Yeah, in constructed. So, yeah, it's very it's very good deck, and my deck was not that good to get through all that. So what two one. But made top eight. With how did your how did your first draft go, Kevin? I put you on the spot right as you start coughing. All good, all good. <laughs> uh, my first draft was it was fine. Um, so it was a six person pod. There ended up being four Earth heroes and two Lightning heroes, and the the other three Earth heroes were all to my left, and the other Room Blade was two seats to my left of the six. So at least in theory, I was in the optimal Florian seat, given the six person pod. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up with a draft deck that, so I was light on decompose. Uh, we actually, we've looked, tried to figure it out later. And I think we had three, 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 and four total decompose cards in each of the Oof. four earth heroes decks, which is light, but you know, it, Draft is a self-balancing format, right? There were four <laughs> Earth heroes. We were all light on decompose, but uh, I ended up only playing against the other Earth heroes in the pod. Um, I ended up with a deck that was a lot more, a lot more Rune Blade action than Earth action in general. Um, I didn't love it, but it was fine. It was it was serviceable and you know, blocked really well. I had. Uh, I actually I had like at least three copies of Fruits of the Forest, um, which helped make sure that when I hit my decompose cards, I was ready to to get that. Uh, mm-hmm. And I prioritized, you know, finding either f- very flexible cards like Fruits, or um, you know, like I had a Fertile Ground and a few other like solid bits of life gain that made it really tough for Avertance to try and uh, burn me out or Acilio, but I didn't play any. Um, Round one, I played against Avertance, and it wasn't particularly close. I it would have, I would have been hard pressed to have stacked my deck in a better order. 
I think I with with my three decomposed cards, I think I turned Florian's ability on on my third turn. And then hey, the next good. turns were like I hit my red malefic incantation, I hit my arcane seeds life, uh, and I I won that game at like eight, uh, which and I don't I didn't, I didn't have to break my boots. It was just not close. Um, round two I played against Mark. Mark was also on Verdance, and uh, oh interesting, yeah I was at eight when I won both of those Verdance matchups. So I think I. Had a version that was really solid in that matchup. I think I had a lot of you know good flexible, you know, extra life gain sources that really help take the sting out of a lot of the arcane stuff going around. Uh, and then my third round uh, was against uh, the other Florian, and that one at that point we were both 2-0, so we were both sort of safely safely in top cut. So I took a more aggressive line on a couple turns, and the game came down to final cards and deck, so the aggressive line that was less card conservative ended up costing me once we got down to, you know, the bitter end of our respective decks. Um, but it was a good it was a good lesson, I guess, in, you know, oftentimes like cards matter more than life points, uh, in, in that matchup in particular. Um, and uh yeah, but my opponent played it very well and I was able to make top eight. So, yeah, we're all into top eight. We sit down for the draft. I don't... I remember starting off by taking some Earth cards in that draft, and then it skewed very much like how my Verdance draft started. Uh, it was just like, oh, these are a bunch of wizard cards. I assume that I'm still in Verdance, but I'm open to either wizard. And then at the bottom of the pack, it was like, some really bad lightning cards here. I guess I'm supposed to be drafting Asilio. And uh, while I was just trying to floundering, it felt like the whole draft. I think I had one or I think I had two red lightning cards in my entire pool by the end of it. Uh, you two were sitting next to each other and just feasting, I heard. Yep. Yeah. I. <laughs> <That's not laughs> I'm, I'm sitting next to Kevin, passing to Kevin, one and three. And I, I've heard Kevin say many, many a time that he loves drafting Florian. So I'm like, if I just pass Kevin a good, like, <laughs> Earth cards, he'll just play it, and I'll get to play Lightning, which is what, like, I would rather do, because I feel like less people tend to draft that. Um, so I don't remember what my pack one, pick one was, but it was... I actually think it was uh, Red Hit the High Notes, if I remember correctly. Okay, that's a pretty reasonable pack yeah. and pick one. But then I passed a bunch of Earth cards to Kevin, who I'm sure picked one of them and passed the rest of them. And then I think I I picked something else and then passed it well-grounded to Kevin. And I was like, all right, he's locked in. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's playing Florian for sure. <laughs> you played Kevin like a fiddle. <laughs> It's what it's what I was predisposed to do anyways. And more importantly, it wasn't just like, oh, signal from Alex. It was a well-grounded was my pick three. So I'm like, okay. So the two people to my right didn't take well-grounded. And, you know, the person to Alex's right was Gary, which, you know, we know he knows what he's doing. You're not passing on that unless you're trying hard to go into lightning. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this is perfect. I'm super locked in because I, I pack one, pick one, a red cadaver is tilling. And then I'm not sure. I'm not sure what was in the pack that you passed me. Um, not sure if it was a finals spirit now, because you yeah, have to take the red the, one. Yeah, it was that it. Yeah, is I, that... I passed that. OK, yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> OK, this is great. Just start out with two red three for eights and then take a well-grounded and I'm like sold. Okay. Shipping it. I will take the best Florian card out of every pack for the rest of the draft. Uh, and that was a good decision. Yeah. I, when the second well-grounded came, that was like, also like, Oh, Gary is also playing lightning. Okay. So I, I, I will say Alex, cause I want to tell the story of our top eight game. So don't spoil the gimmick of your deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no Cause, problem. Because I want to, uh, yeah. I want to tell that from my perspective. 
<laughs> it sounds good. Wh- which gimmick? There's multiple gimmicks, but all right. you know, uh, <laughs> uh, it's particularly potent against you, especially. Um, but seeing the well grounded, knowing that okay, Gary is also playing lightning. Not sure what uh, Jesse, who's passing him, is playing, because uh, I know Jesse will draft whatever is open. Um, but I looked at the next couple packs, and there's uh, wizard cards missing, but still like a ton of Runeblade cards. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be Aurora. So pack one and three, I'm going to take really good Runeblade cards. And then pack two, when Kevin is passing to me, I'm going to get all of my lightning stuff. Um, and that's exactly how it went. <laughs> All right. Pack two, I passed Alex, uh, an arc lightning. I passed Alex. By the way, I'm, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to change my grade from our review You're... last week. It's an A. It's an a. <laughs> yes, it's an A. <laughs> it's an A. <laughs> Kevin, you're supposed to hate pick that card. We talked about oh, this. Oh no, no, no! There were still good cards coming. What my did way. you? What did you take over? Probably over like a Earth? blue autumn's touch. <laughs> no, I hate pick the arc lightning. Arc lightning didn't kill me in my game. I lost to a different majestic. <laughs> hey, you know what else you passed me after that? The eclectic next, very next magnetism. Pack. And you know it's the pack after that. Burn up shock. Sure was. Just, just fed these bomb cards one after another to you, and I'm just like, oh, well, at least, at least, you know, hopefully we don't have to play it till the finals. At least we'll get an invite to London off of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, yeah, that was pretty nasty. And then pack yeah. three, like I, I got past a re, like a, a really late, or like a, a eighth pick. Runehold release, and I'm like, "What? This is." I was shocked. I, I, I was swear, so shocked. I swear the Runeblade equipment are overprinted compared to the Wizard equipment. Because every not. draft, I saw two of the Runeblade equipment each, and I didn't see. I saw. I got an inclined cloak in the top eight draft, and I didn't see a Wizard equipment the rest of the day. It's ridiculous. That was a flaw to my deck. Was I had? You had zero equipment. equipment. Zero yeah. It was so I, close to not after I had which the, is crazy. I had the Arc Lightning, so I was like, oh man, I'm gonna get the like I'm taking the Room Blade equipment over anything else because they're worth yes, like literally, what they're it's worth. On board go again. Right, right. Yeah. So but I did not see them the entire draft. They did not come past me. Yeah, so in pack three, like my my Cilio deck is close to a disaster. Like I have a sigil of lightning, I have like one red lightning card. It's bad. And I finally like pick three, pack three, get a Comet Storm shot, and I'm like, okay, finally I have like something that this deck can do at least. I can either go tall on a Comet Storm or I can shock my opponent on their turn. And so I sit down against Alex in our in the first game of top eight. And he flips Aurora, and I'm like, oh, do you have your <laughs> do, you, do you have your equipment under your hero? Because I see like some safe cards, and he's like. No, those are tokens. I have zero equipment. And I'm like, I might have a shot at winning this. <laughs> and so I, I've got the life pad here. So you went down to three. Sorry, you went down to. Yeah, you went down to three really quickly. And I was like, okay. Oh, no, no, no. no. Sorry. Hold on. Let me, let me set up the turn better. So I'm I don't really have outs left in this game just because I'm like running out of good cards in my deck. I know that the Comet Storm Shock is coming. I draw up and I see a hand that can go. Um, <laughs> it can go electrostatic discharge, lightning surge without go again, um, and then can Comet Storm Shock. It can just shock with Volzar. And I'm like, a little of your life total and you're at nine. You don't have Twinkle Toes. And I'm like, okay, so my out is, it, lo- it looks like I have a bad turn. Like I pitch a blue to play a one cost or something. And I just come in for six attack. And I bait you into going to three because you're like, okay, she can't use the last card in her hand. It's just an arsenal. So I don't have to worry about it. 
And so you're at nine, you take the sips from the pumped lightning surge without go again. And I'm like, I got you. Volzar, shock for three arcane. So I'm throwing away my comet storm. And you count your blessings. <laughs> and I'm just like, no. But it was either versus you or Jesse that I played Count Your Blessings twice in one turn. Was that was that the that game? That was not against me. Oh, must have been against Jesse. Because is, you had four of that card, which is insane because yeah. I had a blue as well. Okay, you had three. But well, that's but still two like, reds and a yellow. So yeah, like two reds and a yellow though. That's crazy considering I also had one in my deck. Four is like way more than you usually see in a draft. Wow. Never thought to play around it out of Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> While we were drafting, the uh, there was a pack that came around that just didn't have anything that I was interested in, but I had a red count your blessings. I was like, you know what, it's it's life gain in this format. Seems okay, and if I get another one, then it's great. Uh, so then I proceed to uh, get a yellow one a couple picks later and then later i think i open up pack three and it has another red one in it i was like well <laughs> it's definitely worth it now <laughs> so you had an arc lightning triple count your blessings aurora deck what what a monstrosity <laughs> it was a monstrosity yeah it was kind of nuts um yeah so alex definitely took our game uh yeah so my top eight match was a rematch against mark uh and i would proceed to the, finish the fourth time you've played mark third, this weekend third time third. i played him on the weekend uh and i went three and oh into calling champion mark morrison on the weekend uh he was on verdance and he conceded when i was at 14 life i think because i was just clearly going to to fatigue him i so all right so my deck had seven good decompose cards like that's insane th three tillings uh a red of the gain a point of life a red carapace and then yellow and blue summer's falls um i had one red malefic i had an arcane seeds life that came from lightning alley to my right uh lightning de alley. deck was just was absolutely gas and like even my blues were like good i get two blue autumn's touches and it was just it was all good stuff i had two it also ended up with two splintering deadwoods on top of all of that so deck was just, the game. Yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> deck was phenomenal to the point where when there were some other drafts that were going a little rougher and people were taking just playable cards, I ended up being able to get, I got four copies of Arcane Polarity, a blue, two yellows, and a red, and I finished the draft where I also have three copies of Fertile Ground, um, and then a Rainbow of Finals Fighting Spirit, and yeah, so I, like, I, I just had tons of life gain and i matched into avertance and i kept putting out steady pressure and gaining life anytime i could and uh it just went when it works out like that there just wasn't too much that mark could do when so much of his damage was was arcane okay top four for both of you top four i'm clearly the slacker this weekend i'm only top eighting events <laughs> <laughs> yeah um I turn to Jesse again, who is playing Asilio again. Uh, and it kind of goes the same way that Rain Eyes game goes, where I play the first Count Your Blessings, and he's like, whoa, that's crazy. And I play the second <laughs> Count Your Blessings, and he's like, whoa, how'd you get two of those? And then I play the third Count Your Blessings, and he's like, I can't win this game. <laughs> It's funny, because you said, whoa, how'd you get two of those? And I heard it in Jesse's voice. <laughs> I know exactly the intonation he said that with. Yeah. So, life yeah, game no, that's, that's, and arc lightning yeah. dealing five arcane damage by itself is... Uh... Hell of a combo. Uh, my top four match, I paired into a different Florian. Well, obviously a different and I can't play myself. Um, and this Bottom match... One, right? What? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> this, this match was crazy. It, it was a, 
oh, about as close as the Viscera and Enigma matchup from the day before. So we're both a little slow to hit our decomposes and, you know, the early part of the game, you're just kind of trading damage, trying to get decent value, setting up a halfway decent pitch stack. Um, and I, I, there's a turn where I get, or I don't know. Like I, I felt like I was accruing a steady advantage, not a huge one, but a, a like coming out on top of like card efficiency trades and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, but like three or four turns in, uh, my Florian opponent pitches a germinate and I was like, oh, that's a clock. That's good to know about. <laughs> that's, that's really good to know about and is going to be a huge problem. Uh, cause that card is, is the, is probably the closest thing to the mirror guy of this set. I would admit. Um... Arc Lightning is a bigger bomb at this point in my head, just because you don't have to wait. You just you draw Arc Lightning and it's like game's over. That's fair. Well, so, so, you know, so one of the premier majestic bombs of the game, and it's particularly totally. particularly effective in an Earth Mirror where things are going to progress much more slowly, because you know while there are explosive turns, they don't tend to be as you know as as huge as a lot of the Lightning Heroes will get at. Uh, so I know I'm on a clock. I do what I can to try and get good offense out and keep making really good high efficiency trades. I know when we're gonna when we're getting close back around to the germinate, and I'm like, I need to brace for this, so I get my red arcane uh, or reverse polarity and arsenal. I pitch a yellow for my sword and keep a weaker card just to make sure I keep blues in my hand so that I can. Uh, pitch to the macro as much as possible. The boots were online. Uh, and, you know, finally the germinate turn happens, pitches three blues into it, so makes 10 rune chance and gains five life. So 15 value off of this one card. It just completely erases all of the incre incremental advantage I had built up to that point in the game. Uh, and he uncorks, and I... Where was it? It was, I was at 17, but on the uncork turn, it was 10 rune chance, but then he's like, play Arcane Cussing, play Deadwood Dirge, uh, go up to 16. Oh my. Uh, or 18, I don't know. It, it was an absurd number of rune chance for a limited game. Uh, and then swings a blue uh, rune rager swarm. So it was like 17 arcane oh. and, and one, one. go again. <laughs> Uh, so obviously I can't stop all of that arcane, uh, and on that turn I think I go. So it was it was that into a blue meet and greet into sword for four was the whole end of the turn. Um, but I had, uh, had I had double embodiment of earth, so I ended up like using a two block crap card to block the sword for four. I went to one and kept it so I could still play offense, and I didn't even I didn't break the macro or my boots. And I was just like, let's just absorb this and play from this new game state. Uh, but it was just just a hair too much value on a single card. Uh, and we, we came down to actual my last card. And when I had one, he had two. And if there's oh. no germinate in that game, I, I definitely just take it. I think I just, there's no, you know, like... I got eight value out of plenty of cards, but I didn't get 15 out of any of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then also there was a turn where I think he just like swung with sword and then like double red fertile grounded too. So trying to carve through 15, I'm sure it was more than 15, but at least 15 extra life. And yeah, it was, it was one-to-one -one, fully, fully down to the end. And I, I couldn't get there. So, uh, Unfortunately, I could not make the finals with Alex and get the uh, get the IP3 uh, finals uh, matchup. But We've still got always next time. Yeah, there's still time. And then you killed it in the finals, right, Alex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going <laughs> going to London. Going to London. Yeah. <sighs> um, That's. Crazy to take it down in the first weekend. It's really cool. Yeah. 
Uh, and shout out to uh, to Jamie, fellow Team Eclipse. Oh player, yes, taking one, taking down a PQ down in Oklahoma. Undefeated, undefeated Enigma on the day. One it of was... those twenty-two Enigma wins this weekend. What a, what a segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have the meta results from the first uh, first week of events, and I thought. I'm so confused. I thought Enigma was the best deck in the format. What happened? Aurora happened. Well, and some Viscera Enigma happened. And... Don't, don't you remember? Oh, you're right. You're right. Enigma sucks. How could I forget? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This sucks. Uh, Zach Bun, Kool-Aid Man's through the wall. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Constructed wins on the weekend. Aurora led the way with 23 wins followed immediately by Enigma with 22. Uh, after that, there's a pretty steep drop-off. Uh, Azalea got 10 wins, New got 9, Viscerai and Florian each got 7. Uh, things looking pretty up for the Room Blades. <laughs> That's pretty solid. Because yeah. even even Vincent made this list. Vincent took down a ProQuest also. So every Room Blade in CC got a win in this first weekend of events, which is pretty sweet. So... Congrats to us. It's been a bit of a dry spell, so we deserve it. (laughs) It has been a hot minute. (laughs) Um, So yeah, uh, then yeah, so sorry. Viscerai and Florian each had seven. Then uh, Zen, Bolton, Kano, Ko, Dash, and Levia all had two or three. Uh, And then Dorinthia, Uzuri, Prism, Vincette, Phi and oh my god, it's literally it's so tiny I Verdant. can't read it. Oh, it's Verdant's down there. Verdant's yeah. snuck on. I'm sad. Elements. I want. I uh, wanted to do it. I wanted the first one. Shout out to Mercy Bickle, the lone Phi ProQuest winner. Oh, is it Mercy? I didn't realize that's awesome. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy was the the single Phi winner. Yeah, that's really cool. I just I believe it. Picked, picked the might right medical and showed up and just beat up a bunch of Enigma that we're not expecting to defend a million head jabs. I was gonna say I, I think if yeah that that was on my radar to a non-zero extent of like if this becomes a oh it's Enigma versus the world format Phi mm-hmm. is a problem for that deck. Mm-hmm. It's not yes. raw <laughs> as fast as Aurora, but still just. Head jab, head jab, head jab for days. Our our, our sleeper picks of uh Dorinthia Ironsong and Zen uh like each having a win bodes well for uh our knowledge of the game, I guess. <laughs> we did Are you saying you're good at this game, game Alex? That's a bold claim. No, I, that's not what I said. No, 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 we're all bad. We we have an IP three, like I it's it's yeah. rough. I don't know how you could win. Boo. Uh, <laughs> so I guess first off, though, do any of those numbers surprise you? I didn't think Aurora would be so high. Um, I knew there was an aggro deck there. I assumed it would take people longer to figure Lightning out, because it seems like a very complicated class in terms of deck building ratios. Um, Azalea being third, I don't know that I would have called either. Fair, I think. What I've, from my understanding, the Azalea matchup into Enigma, I think, is Azalea favored. So only, Quite. O- only yeah. so much, you know, twelve high dominated arrows that you can defend, and you know, I get to yeah, run a bunch good. of stuff that says prevention doesn't prevent. Uh, you know, well, it's pr- pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the... I think Azalea's got a reasonable matchup into Aurora Enigma and New, so those being like the top three decks. Okay, See, makes sense. It's true, but at the same time, or I don't know, not at the same time, but Aurora is a lot more red in the ledger proof than arguably any other aggro deck we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's just say discharge being an instant and not an onset action is and lightning press and the fact that yeah. you know so so you can 
oh, my off turn where I don't get to also swing my sword, electrostatic discharge, any zero for four, arsenal, your optimal card, pitch a card to make uh, an embodiment of lightning. That's a that's a great turn cycle. You could just do that under riddle. True. Yeah, but it does shut down the turns of uh, I'm going to snatch with go again and a channel lightning valley. If it hits, I draw two. And then, okay, well, we're definitely blocking that one out. And then, like, here's a here's a flittering charge for four. If it hits, I draw a card. It turns off those kinds of turns. Channel Lightning Valley, trying to, trying to silly. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder uh, if there's a, a Briar deck in LL that runs kind of a Heroic and Lightning Valley. Get those out at the same time. I think the ratios are too tough. I, I suspect Probably, yeah. that Briar will continue being... The, the CMH deck, especially with the, the recent additions um, and and the new uh, dual Lightning Earth split card. Regrowth Shock, I think it is. Regrowth Shock, um, yeah. Like, that card fits in, like, just so phenomenally well. Uh, I just don't think she needs Channel Lightning Valley. You're just way more interested in the raw damage potential of CMH. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the issue with Channel Lightning Valley is it's not actually good the first turn you play it, right? The first turn you play it, it just replaces itself, so, like, it did nothing. You have to channel it once before it has actually drawn you a card. It also, you know, like, you know, it's a lightning card. Briar doesn't really care if you specifically played a lightning card, whereas Aurora very much cares with like, both the sword yeah. and the hero ability. Um, so, yeah, I think... I think Aurora and Living Legend is going to be a Ball Lightning, Channel Lightning Valley deck, but I think Briar is going to stick to CMH. But she's probably real stoked that Rune Raider Swarm exists now. <laughs> yeah, I believe both of those, both of those guesses. Um, I I gotta say I actually think that, you know, not not that it's super out of the ordinary. I think I'm a little surprised at the amount of success that Florian had. Um, okay. Particularly okay. in in the meta, you know, w with Enigma being quite prevalent, um, you know, and, and it's possible, you know, obviously not every pro quest is the same size. Um, so sometimes you get smaller metas that, you know, there just aren't any Enigmas locally at this other place and playing Florian dot value is just, you know, good enough to just outvalue everyone. Um, but that's one that I think a, a deck that I think Enigma very very much has the potential to hold back in the meta. That I do agree with. You know what I we have a new Briar on our hands. You realize, um, and I and I don't mean Aurora. Dash IE was supposed to be like, oh, she's going to be gone so soon. Uh, she got what two wins? <laughs> yeah, was that ten points? I. I think she might. I think she might accidentally be around for a while. How is it that this happens every single time a hero hits like nine hundred points, and then they're just like, "But what if I didn't?" LL does does Dash Inventor Extraordinaire get anything out of the Armory deck that is coming next week, or not? I haven't looked that deep into it. I don't think so. The zero for four, the pseudo zero for four might get played. But you need to have cranked, right? And she doesn't really do that outside of exactly backup protocol. Oh, that's true. Yeah, sorry, I'm pulling it up because I. Well, it just gets the bonus if you've cranked, right? Yeah, yeah. but like Dash has no shortage of, you know, boost head jabs. She's already not playing all of them. Yeah, I mean it's probably the new best <laughs> head jab boost card, but. That's uh... true. But no, I don't really. Not think saying so. a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that she's interested in any of the heavy inter industry equipment that's in the set, or that's in the the armory deck. All right. So where do we think that Dash IO is going to land on this uh, leaderboard? That's hot. Next week. Or next week I I I think she will be the most winning deck for the week that the armory deck comes out, and people have not formulated answers well. I will think so? be... do you think enough do you think enough people will be playing it for her to get that many wins? I I think so. I think people have lists and are sandbagging it to an ex you know, partially world's prep stuff, 
also partially, you know, there once you I... started getting the the cards from the deck, you're like, well, I'm not going to bother with this until they juice it here. Dio is not on this list of PQ winners in this week. Like, not not a one. It it's a good deck right now. I it's just getting better. <laughs> I don't believe that people are doing a sandbag for worlds because I heard the exact same arguments floated about with um, Count Your Blessings Enigma, and people were like, oh yeah, I found this sick deck, it's, but uh, you know, we got to keep it secret for worlds, and then you know, Team Talks, like in Jacob Clemens, just comes to lie and like, no, actually, this is just public knowledge, and it's in the topic of calling. Trust me, I am too familiar with that. That's fair. I, I, don't, you know, I don't think there's a grand conspiracy to try to keep the fact that Dio is about to get juiced like crazy is very much not a secret uh, mm-hmm. but yeah I, I also I, I do wonder how much of it is oh well we're just not going to bother with Dio for these first couple weekends because we don't have don't have the sauce to add yet I don't know though because like I don't know about y'all every game I'm playing against Dio right now it's just like let's assume post armory deck because it's not really worth playing against you know, a lame duck deck list at this point. I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, pessimistic. I I will say I don't think that... I think Dio is a probably a more difficult deck to pilot optimally than Aurora. And I think I keep Dio's conquest that. numbers lower than Aurora's. I think Aurora is a much more accessible uh, okay. much more accessible aggro deck to play. Uh, yeah, no, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, also, I don't know. If, I don't if know you're, how you're going gonna... to your ProQuest after Dio comes out, just just pack three a race face. It's good against the Earth Heroes. It's good against the mechs. Uh, well, I mean, it's good against, good against Aurora Lightning. too. Yeah. It's uh, just good. It's just, <laughs> yeah. good. just good right now. It will... It, it's Dio is going to be good enough that a race face probably starts outranking weakest link in effective sideboard slots. I think. I just wish. I just wish it blocked three. It makes me so sad that it doesn't. I mean, realistically, I think the argument is probably that Command and Conquer and the weakest link shouldn't block for three. <laughs> you know what? Touche. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the two block is kind of reminding you, hey, you shouldn't be blocking with this card. <laughs> right. If it's in your deck, you, you should, should be... be attacking with this. <laughs> uh, but what do you do when you draw two of them, Alex? Block for Play two. one, Arsenal one. Cool. <laughs> You're so right. Even better. Even better. And that's why I'm going to London, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know how to Arsenal. Uh, and I don't know how to draw Plow Under at the right moment. Dang it. And I don't know how to draft. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Because oh. you only... Eh, you'll figure it out. You got three weeks. Oh, I'm just playing CC events after this. I'm oh, that works too. <laughs> I, I'm done playing Enigma. We're just going to play new a bunch and not win and have fun. Nah, you can get it. I, honestly, I think uh, Dio hitting the scene is one of the like addition by subtraction. So Dio and Aurora combined are two things that at least on paper seem like they will bully Enigma a fair bit. And Enigma mm-hmm. stocks going down and aggro stocks going up means new stocks also going up because new can be a very effective wielder of erase face and friends. Here so so does Victor come back? Yeah. I would love that as new. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we all, we all know it's Riptide's time. <laughs> when is it not? When is it not? You're right. You're so Operation right. Operation Riptide, engage. Garner betrayed himself and uh, played <laughs> and his immediately regretted Riptide it. and immediately regretted it. Yeah. It's all right. He'll, he'll find his way back to the righteous path. Yeah. Uh, so so you're swapping over to new, Rhea, main yeah. hero of ProQuest season. Alex, are you sticking with Verdance? For the rest oh i guess especially since you're already qualified now it's like play what you want just what do you want to play yeah yeah, yeah i do want to play burns i do think it's i think it's fun i like the i like the style it's my first wizard um but i also part of me is keeps getting keeps thinking about don blade dorinthia it's like Theo doesn't block very well aurora doesn't block very well 
I've got, once again, spicy tech for uh, Enigma, so... Uh, oh, maybe... Alex, it, it, if there's anything Alex has, it is spicy tech. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm good for. Playing against Dorinthia, like Transcend, and you're like, Aetherize. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not quite that. Fair, fair. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to stick with the purple guy. I... I'm out of town the next two I weekends, think you should. so I only yeah. get one more pro quest. Uh, so I think we're gonna we're gonna stick with this guy right here. Has served me well so far. I've got some ideas for improvements to make to the deck. It starts with cutting blue amplify the Arknight because that card sucks. Uh, it's fine. It's really bad in the late game if you don't you know aren't aren't churning out a ton of chance. So. Uh, but yeah. Thank you for, for listening watching. to our yeah, episode. <laughs> um, I, realized, I realized that I have forgotten to ask you all to like our uh, videos if you want to. So you can do that now. That was, the most, <laughs> that was the most boomer delivery of that that I've ever heard, Alex. It was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> you have achieved true fab dad status. <laughs> yeah. We've arrived. Yep, I, yep. I partially care because, like, I want people to see the video, but I also don't care, like, <laughs> about the the numbers. So it is fun watching well, the I, numbers go up, though. Numbers go up is always awesome. I do hope that you like, subscribe. If you're enjoying the podcast, please share it with your friend. That's how we primarily grow, um, because we all just like talking about flesh and blood and hopefully you like talking about flesh and blood with your friends too and then we'll all get spoiler cards yeah. and then we'll all get spoiler cards <laughs> <laughs> uh all right everyone thanks for hanging out and we'll catch you next time see ya